everybody. Uh, I am Debbie Hall from Designer Draperies, and we are a drapery uh, window and window treatment company located in South Jersey, right by Philadelphia. And uh, we've been in business for 25 years. We have lots of fun. Um, Rebecca and I uh, just get together and have fun, and we love for people to join us. Yes. Yes, and I'm Rebecca Munster. I own Rebecca Munster Designs. I am in the DC area. Um, we specialize in window coverings, upholstery, and soft furnishings. Um, and we just have a lot of fun. And today's topic is the art of pillows. Um, because I think Debbie and I, <laughs> I think we both realize we do a lot more pillows than we realize. Because <laughs> But those little pillows are like little pops of like magic in a room, right? We all love to use pillows in lots of different ways. And um, I think sometimes we find that, you know, you may be of the less is more, or you may be from the camp of like, I can't have enough pillows, right? So I think there's probably two camps <laughs> in the world, right, Debbie? <laughs> and my, my husband's camp is less. <laughs> on, on, well, on the bed. Uh -huh. Like a lot of decorative pillows on the bed, but when it comes to the sofa, the boys, every, Kelly, Kelly's saying less. Kelly, I know that you're less <laughs> pillows, but when it comes to the sofa, the boys are like, can we have more pillows? I mean, everybody's always grabbing pillows because, you know, when they stretch out. Yeah, so, yeah. Rebecca, what are you, less or more? I am a more. I love pillows. I love what they do to a room. I love the softness. I love being able to add lots of different pops of colors and patterns. So I am definitely, um, you can't have enough pillows. Um, but I've also seen, and I think we've got some examples in here too, where you've just used a few strategically placed, just the right size, just the right pattern pillows, and it can make a huge um, difference as well. So it also brings in uh, another color to a room a lot mm -hmm. of times, or it helps tie in your window treatment into the room. Or in this case, you're looking at green chairs and the pillows over on the other side. You always want to make sure that you distribute your color throughout the different quadrants of the room. Mm -hmm. So this picture right here in front of you, picture it with no green pillow over there, it would just be blue and kind of boring. Whereas that, that green is distributing the color throughout the room and bringing that pop in. Yeah. I always like to think of pillows as art and like to think of them sort of like you would art that you were going to hang on the wall, you know, and, and there's things, it, it isn't just like throw a pillow on the couch, right? When we're, and we're, as we go through, we're going to share some pictures with you of different projects. Well, Debbie and I will talk about that, this thought process that went through our heads as we were helping our clients pick out the pillows. But it's, it, again, it's not just like throw the pillow on the, on the sofa. Um, you've got to think about size and proportion. So pillows come in a million different sizes. What's the right size? Because if you have a ginormous sectional and you put an itty bitty pillow on it, that's going to look silly. And it's going to be kind of like putting that tiny little piece of artwork on a big, huge wall. Like you've got to make sure your proportions are right. The size is right. Um, am I going to do a square rectangle? Am I going to do a bolster or a circle? Um, so you'll think about shape to color. Like Debbie was talking about color is really important. Pillows can really help us tie in different parts of the room and bring them all together. Um, texture. So if we're looking for more texture in the room, we're looking for more pattern in the room, pillows can help us accomplish that without being, you know, if you don't want a sofa that's got this big, huge, bold pattern, I can do some really bold, cool pillows and it may not feel as overwhelming to you. It's also easier to change out pillows than it is full sofas. So <laughs> it's another nice way to like use um, pillows as you go. Um, and then last is the layout. We'll talk a little bit about there's different ways that you may want to lay pillows out on a sofa versus a chair versus a bench. And some of the thought process that goes in mine and Debbie's heads is we're helping clients figure that out. Thank you for going through all of that because I was in the process of trying to text Sherry. Welcome, Sherry. The uh, <laughs> Hi, Sherry. <laughs> so I was trying to pull it up. I'm like, oh my goodness. Um, 
Well, you know yeah. me, I have no problem talking. I can always talk. <laughs> that goes for both of us. Uh, yes, pillows bring just that extra added element into any room. And it's, it's just that finishing touch a lot of times, you know, just bringing that one extra color or that the, the you know, I'm obsessed with the great big, like, two inch pom poms yeah. lately and you know so pillows and throws throws do the same thing a lot of times yeah so yeah. we're gonna go through like like uh rebecca said a lot of the different things that we've uh that we've worked on this one right here uh you've got uh the embroidery for the w's it's so, so we do send out and have things embroidered for our clients uh, you know, so that we can monogram for them. Uh, the pillows behind that, that, that coral fabric is actually from another pattern that she loved the coral, but we wanted to bring in the blue. And so we just cut that off and just applique that on. And this is actually a full breakfast banquette that it's sitting on uh, mm -hmm. with the beautiful buttons you can see. Uh, that is pretty. As well. Yeah. And it just, um, this, this particular pillow, while there is some piping on the inside, that's actually, that's called a flange. So that flat edge on the pillow. So when you guys are ordering your pillows, you'll have all the right words for them. Um, and this has piping on it. So usually you'll, you know, um, we don't always have to do something around the edges. I think sometimes in more contemporary designs, uh, again, less is more, so you may not want to do that, um, but it adds a really fun finishing touch and you can add all sorts of fun, different decorative elements. So talking about the flange real quick, yes. And yes. Rebecca, I don't know about you, but I know that right now flanges are, that's one of the hottest things out there, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and up, up here, uh, I love just the clean line of the flange. Uh, just short. I don't like them really big and floppy, uh, mm -hmm. which, you know, on bed, sometimes they'll be the bigger floppier ones, but I, I, I like the small tighter ones. Yeah, that is nice. That the is other really thing. Nice. Okay. So can you go back because Kelly yes. is asking what a flange is. Ah, yes. and if you can point it out again, it's yeah. this flat piece of fabric that's going around. If you can see on the picture here, it's a flat piece of fabric that is around the edge. So mm -hmm. you've got the pillow form and the actual pillow, and then you have a flat edging that goes all the way around. Yeah. And yeah, I love that look. Yeah, also, it's pretty. The other thing that I want to cover off mm -hmm. is there are different fills that you can use in pillows. And so we, we'll talk about that a little bit more as we go through, but yeah. uh, the W, the green pillow on the right, you see kind of has that traditional karate chop, designer karate chop in the middle mm -hmm. so that it's not just sitting there very stiff. And so I'll go through some of the different uh, fills so that you know when, when you want to get the karate chop and when you don't. Right, right. <laughs> That's hard. And some people just don't like the karate chop and some people right. love the karate chop. That's yep. another one of those things. It's, you know, you're kind of one extreme or the other, but there are times when the karate chop is going to make that pillow look the prettiest and other times when you may not want it because it will impact the overall um, look and design. Um, this is just, this is a sofa. So when we talk about like layering pillows on sofa, this is like, this is stuffed, right? We wanted lots of pillows on this sofa. <laughs> we wanted to be really comfortable. Um, she has some really neat artwork in the room from Greece that has this fun blue in it. So pulling in that blue was just great. And we, we layered pattern here. That's another reason why I showed this. There's a lot of pillows and there's pattern, but the type of pattern, this being a larger pattern and this being more of a texture, they work together. So don't be afraid of trying to layer different things because it adds more. If this had been a flat blue, it wouldn't be as interesting and as fun. Um, and there are actually three of those big ones in the back. And then we did the fun pattern on the sides too, and then two of these. So we really stuffed this sofa full and it, it works here and it's really fun to have all those pillows. And definitely an area where you don't want to karate chop your pillows. You yes. want them nice and full and plump. So yes, and in this case, some sofas, yeah, this case, like there's not 
a softness built into the back. Like this is the softness on the pill on the sofa is all the pillows. <laughs> right. Uh, this is another fun sofa that we did. This is my client that loves grandma chic. Um, and so this is her formal living room. Um, we did all these pom-poms, which we know Debbie loves the pom-poms. Yeah. <laughs> this beautiful velvet um, and this fun print. And again, as you can see here, we really were trying to layer patterns and textures and shapes. We didn't want it all to be the same. You know, in some, on some sofas, like the one I just showed you, kind of having them all um, uniform worked on that sofa, right? And what we changed out was pattern. Here, we wanted to really have different sizes and shapes and really make it interesting. Um, it was less, this is a formal living room, that was a family room. This is less of comfort and more of, let's bring all the fun bling that we can into that room. And, and Mary just asked, did you call it Grandma Chic? And yes, I did. That is the, if you, if you go to Instagram and you do hashtag Grandma Chic, <laughs> Granny Chic. I think it might be Granny Chic. I should call it Granny Chic. Yeah. If you do hashtag Granny Chic, you'll get all these pictures that come up. It's apparently what all the millennials are looking for. <laughs> Mary said she's heard a lot of different terms, but not that one yet. <laughs> oh, oh, you'll see. It. You know, I've, I've gone to clients' homes where. Um, age, I, I would say age-wise, probably between uh, mid-30s to, to early 40s. And, oh, okay, she's heard, you've heard of Grandma Millennial. Okay. Ah. And that makes sense. You know, I've yeah. got one and they've got their grandmother's vintage pieces and that's the look that they want. And they want to add a lot of weight on the windows that mm -hmm. kind of work with those vintage pieces and they love the heavy brocades and and yep. trims that were out then and, yeah. and Mary, Mary says she's loving it uh, yeah <laughs> it I, is great it's uh, I'm always happy when when we've got more with the uh, you know more layers and trims yeah. and that's my favorite so yeah yeah this right here again and it's too bad that I can't zoom in a little bit uh, what, what we were trying to do is you see that this is primarily a blue room and we were trying to bring in a pop of color. She's got the picture uh, on the window treatment. Where is the window treatment? The window that must have been before you put the window treatment. It, it must be. <laughs> but I thought the pillows came after. So, so <laughs> anyway, um, we were trying to pull the, the uh, yellows and the greens. And unfortunately, you can't see the great patterns that are in those fabrics. But That's the green is, is um, like a herringbone, and the yellow is a hound's tooth. And you know, getting back to some of those those old time uh, designs in the fabrics, uh, mm -hmm. just because before it was just a plain blue sofa, and this made it come to life. Yeah, I love that you layered those patterns and colors. That's really fun. All right, so here's one where like a less is more works, right? So this sofa has a lot of shapes and curves and it's, it's just sort of interesting as is, right? But we did pick a more neutral color. So we felt like we needed to add just a little something, but we didn't want to distract too much from all these pretty curves and lines in the sofa. So we just added two and we did decent sized pillows because it's a big, it's a long sofa. It's not a tall sofa, but it's a long sofa. And it might've looked a little funny if we had put little tiny ones in the corner. So we put two decent sized pillows. These have the karate chop <laughs> and those are, <laughs> those are down filled <laughs> um, pillows. The down really does the karate chop nicely. Um, and it added a little bit of color. It's got this taupe in it. And then we added some, some other fun colors that she could pull from in some of the other um, elements in her room. I love also uh, just looking at some of the angles in the pattern that you've mm -hmm. got, it's really reminiscent of like pulling in the leg. You've got, you know, you've got yeah. kind of Paisley pulling in the style of the leg and things like that. And I don't know about you, Rebecca, but I know for me, uh, when we're designing, it's not uncommon to look up and say, oh, okay, look at that, that light fixture up there. Mm -hmm. What can we pull to bring the fabrics together, to pull a pattern and yes. have it mimic, you know? Yeah. 
yeah. just carry through. Yeah. And it's funny you said that because in this particular case, you know, typical newer home, open floor plan, and these pretty like teals and blues and things are throughout other parts of the home. So it also allowed us to kind of bring that into their formal living room and tie all those pieces together without being overly like matchy matchy, but there still is a hint of it, right? Everywhere yep. we go. So beautifully done. It worked out nicely. But again, I wanted to give an, an example of less is more. <laughs> And of course, now that this, was also, wait, that was also Rebecca's uh, sofa, too, that she reupholstered, yeah. not hers, but her <laughs> client. So yeah. she does beautiful reupholstery work as well. Thank okay, you. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so this one is a, we're a little, it's kind of a tight shot. Um, I had actually taken this shot to use for something else, but I thought it worked here because this was a fun idea. So this is a client of mine that is not afraid of colors and patterns. And look, we have three different patterns and they really do work together. They've got all lots of similar colors in them. We took the pretty magenta piping and um, then we wanted to pull out a little bit of the chartreuse, but she, we, she kind of felt like her sofa had two halves, right? And she wanted something that pulled it together in the middle. So we put this long lumbar in the middle. And this is a good example of not wanting a karate chop, right? Because a lumbar looks silly when you karate chop it in most cases. Um, so we have this long lumbar. And I, like I said, I wish I had a far, far away, but I thought it was a good example. And it was kind of a fun thing to think about. Um, if you are one of those people that don't want to just have pillows in the corners, like putting a long lumbar like that can kind of bring it all together. Pillows for chairs. So, um, in the chairs, uh, and I think I end up having lots more chairs than Debbie does in this section. You did. I didn't throw any of my chairs and I thought I've got enough bed ones. <laughs> so, so I'm going to take the chairs and Debbie's taking most of the bed. <laughs> Since we do so much um, upholstery, we tend to do an accent pillow on the chairs. So I had lots to pull from, but um, I think with chairs, you know, I, on occasion you're, you'll stack like a big, you know, a square pillow with maybe a small lumbar in front of it. But most of the time, you're going to be a little a less is more in a chair, right, Debbie? <laughs> yes, because otherwise, you're pulling them all out and nobody's using them. Right. Whereas so, you use yeah. a lumbar and that's, you know, that's really all you need. And then you don't end up with a bunch of pillows on the floor either. Right. And this one's sitting here kind of on an awkward angle, but that is a lumbar. So, you know, we tend to do lumbars a lot when we're do when we're reupholstering pieces. They're just, they're pretty. Um, in this case, it breaks up the stripes a little bit and ties in that fun um, banding we did on the front of that chair. So just, and it's simple again, sometimes, and then this is an example of where like we needed some pattern, right? So sometimes the, the pillow helps to kind of tone things down and, and, show some of the fun accents and sometimes it's kind of the party of the piece right so um and we were careful here that we wanted to make sure the lumbar was low enough that we could still see some of this pretty button tufting but lumbar pillows are a great great pillow to use um in a chair and on a bed <laughs> yeah 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 um the, these are two that i use because sometimes in chairs just having like a big cushy, comfy pillow is a good one, right? And with the shape of this chair, and it kind of has this big front end to it, balancing out the top end with a bigger pillow really helped to give that chair some balance. Um, it was definitely, it is definitely a pear-shaped chair, so it gave it a little bit more balance. Um, and then it also allowed us to, like, give you a nice punch with that pink that we used in the piping. Um, so again, it, it, this, you know, this chair has a lot of patterns. So we wanted to pull out the piping and the, um, and that pink color and, and tone down some of the pattern a little bit too. Um, this is one of those funny, fun chairs. This Debbie, this is my shore house I've helped with. I know okay. you always help with the shore houses, but I got to help with one. <laughs> I love, I love this chair. I mean, that, that's so me, fun. Yeah. Yeah, and it had fancy. this drab gray cushion in it, and we found this fun Krypton fabric, and um, 
I just, again, because it's got like hard lines, just adding a big, soft, fun pillow just yep. softens softens that out a little bit. And again, just made it a little more interesting than if it had just been that cushion sitting there. Oh yeah, and anybody that doesn't, that Krypton sounds, you don't know what that is. Krypton yes. is, uh, it's a, a, fa a, a, go on ahead. You know, I just lost my words again. I, it's a performance fabric Thank and you. it's amazing. <laughs> it is really good stuff. Um, it's soil and stain resistant. If you were to spill a glass of wine on this, it would just puddle up and you could clean it really easily. Um, it's just, it's good stuff. Um, and so uh, she rents out her beach house sometimes. So having something that could stand up to, you know, if someone sits in that with sunscreen on their legs, it's not going to get ruined uh, was really important. Or red wine. <laughs> yes, yes. And then here's another thing, you know, don't forget about like your smaller chairs or your dining room chairs. You can still add a fun pop of something. Just make sure that the scale is, is right. You know, that's, that's a fun way. We wanted to incorporate just a little bit of yellow with these gray and white chairs. And we did, again, we layered pattern on pattern and do you, and that works. You know, this is a bigger pattern and this is a smaller scale pattern. So it really, it really works. Oh, so tell us about the one on the left, that brown. That one? <laughs> <laughs> that was the before picture. This is the after picture. <laughs> I love the way you did. But even, even looking at it, like that pillow just does add a little bit of fun. It does. Um, that was missing before. So. And I love the gray legs on the chair also. Yeah, that, was, that turned out fun. Um, and this, I threw a sofa with a chair because again, I don't know about you, Debbie, but so often I have clients that are so nervous about layering patterns and textures. Oh, yes. Do you hear that all the time, right? Yes. yes. So these are in the same room and this is part of why I brought it up. I mean, that is a pattern, that is a pattern, that is a pattern. We've got three different patterns and these are on sofas and on um, pillows, um, but they work because they're, in this case, we picked from the same color family. So again, those are like the little tips and tricks that we'll use when we're working with you um, is we pulled from the same color family so that they work together. And again, this one has a light background with dark in it. And this is a little bit more muted pattern. So they, those, those worked. Um, and then we, then you can always throw your solids in there to help <laughs> kind of balance it out. Right. Um, but layering patterns, um, is, is actually will elevate your design game, right? Well, and that's, that's really what makes something, uh, custom versus, you know, just off the rack looking. Right. And I, I, I always talk to my clients and I say, it's okay. Design 101. All right. Mm -hmm. So you do, you, you've got your solid, you pull in a stripe, you pull in a texture, you can pull in a couple of patterns you just have to make sure that the size of the patterns is a little bit uh you know like like in the chair you've got the mm -hmm. large scale pattern so mm -hmm. then you go with a smaller scale you mm -hmm. don't want two large scales that are competing with each other but if you do different scale patterns right. then that works so there's so right. many you can you yeah can mix five to six different fabrics so long as you're pulling in the right uh you know your solid your texture your geometric uh you know a large pattern a small pattern yeah yeah and i think that's what worked here you know we've got the stripes we've got the large and the small pattern um and that's what that's part of what made that work but that really is what makes it custom and that's part of the fun and um, I think that's part of what's so fun about pillows is that you can really layer, which really adds richness. And even if the layering is just four pillows, we can still layer um, and use the different fabrics that are available to us. And this is a good example of a pillow that I wouldn't want to karate chop because you would karate chop that pretty little pattern right in half. <laughs> right, I could have I could have karate chopped these two, but that is a good example of one that I wouldn't have necessarily wanted to karate chop. You could have, but you don't always have to. And that's, yeah. that's like you said, that's what I tell people also. Depending on the style of the sofa, the fullness and all of that. Yeah. I will say if you have down pillows though, and I don't and you probably 
give your clients the same. Like down does require some care, right? It needs to be fluffed up on a regular basis because down will just start to settle. <laughs> and that's why it gets that heavy bottom, which is what people like. But it also means you've got to fluff it up on occasion so your pillows stay looking happy. Right. Right. So we've, so really, as, as you're saying this, uh, Kelly said no flange. No, she did, uh, she did welting around yep, the edge. Welting. Um, oh, oh, and no down. All right. I know you're saying <laughs> you, down. You, you know what? Okay. Gotta say when, when you've had negative experiences with feathers, sometimes yeah. you decide no, no feathers in the house, no down. <laughs> any, any. I should go, I should grow, go grab my alternate down pillows. They're just right here because I really am a huge fan. And I know so many people are afraid to go that direction because it's right there. Grab it because that's okay. one of the things that I was going to talk about. Okay. I'm going to grab it right now. Okay. So Trent just put up a post that says, I loved pulling the feathers out of our old pillows. Yeah. <laughs> Now I know why there are always feathers all over the place, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so this is an alternative down pillow. Um, and you can still get a pretty decent karate chop in it if you like a karate chop. It has that same kind of weight that down does, but it stays looking puffy without having to do all that extra. Without having it's to mess with it. It's not yeah. high maintenance. It's not high maintenance like our friend down. Our friend down's a little high maintenance. This guy's not, right? Well, <laughs> absolutely. And so with down, okay. So to give you a, just a quick little synopsis on this, uh, you've got feather, feathers, and then you've got down. Down is the very thin, fine, uh, light, light uh, feathers uh, down like that come from the bottom of the bird. You know, it's, it's that really mm -hmm. soft, fluffy uh, down. So you can get like 90, 10, it's 90 feathers, 10% down, or you can get 50, 50, but typically the higher number is, is feathers. Feathers will poke out. They've got, uh, they've got stronger quills, uh, sharper quills that mm -hmm. will work their way out of the fabric. Mm -hmm. Down does not work its way out as much but because they do have quills you know you are going to have some of them coming out yeah um, so like a 90 10 a lot of people like that for me i don't like the big feathers coming out because mm -hmm. you know they poke you they hurt um i do love down mm -hmm. but i'm really switching over more to an alternative because uh, I, I'm, I'm like a, a no feather zone right now. I do not want another feather in my house. Right <laughs> now. So, well, uh, and there's, you know, there's lots of different feelings about it. Um, if you are picking down just because you think down is the right way to go, explore a little bit. Like the alternative downs have really come a long way. Um, and you know, you get a really nice pillow that stays nice for a long time and you don't get those feathers poking at you. I think for some people that are a little more environmentally conscious or concerned, this is a good route to go to because it's not using feathers. If you're someone that, you know, likes to stay away from using animal products. Um, mm -hmm. But, but down is really, you know, there is something really lovely to be said about down and the way it works. It just does have a little bit more maintenance that you have to do. <laughs> now I'm going to tell you, and then there's another one, which is a, a poly cluster and a poly cluster. Yes. I don't like. Yeah, no, those, it's those are those pillows you have at home that got real flat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're, they're awful. So if you're looking to karate chop, uh, you're really going to want to focus on more of a down or a down alternative. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for something a little bit firmer, then you're going to actually go more towards something that has a little bit more poly in it because it is going to be bulkier and firmer. Mm -hmm. So pillows for beds. Well, you, I love doing this bedrooms. is Debbie. This, this is, this is <laughs> me. I just love doing bedrooms. Um, love doing bolsters. I love pulling in a uh, little knife edge ruffling that, that tight little ruffling. Mm -hmm. So um, pretty. Okay. So let's see how many fabrics do I have here? One, two, three, 
four, five. Five. Yeah, okay, so I've got five. And I don't think anybody looking at that would say, oh, wow, those are way, you know, it's way too busy. It's no, you know, you've, got, you've got the large pattern, you've got the mm -hmm. stripe, you've got a so smaller, smaller pattern. Now, and the solid. that's the solid. And then this other uh, that's on the envelope, that's actually has a very fine texture to it. Ah, pretty. So, and I love that. Yeah. So I love pulling in, you know, utilizing all the different fabrics when I can. Yeah. Bolsters are so great too. I've, I've seen, again, if you're in the less is more camp, like I've seen a bed that'll have the three pillows and then a really long bolster across the back of it. And that's, that's really pretty too, or a really long lumbar. And that, or even not doing the three across the back. I've, you know, I've been seeing more and more where you just do the two. Yeah. Do a, a, a large And then there's bolster. something long. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things I always ask my clients. It's like, how many pillows do you want or don't you want? And let's talk about what hubby wants also, because... Right. It's, it's no fun hopping in bed and having all the pillows on your side of the bed that you have to, you know, <laughs> right. before you can get in bed because it gives them all to you. Right. Um, so this again, so instead of doing a bolster, that's a little lumbar. And I like pulling in just gathering uh, the, that eggplant color was all shirred, uh, just so you know, getting some more texture. The uh, queen size pillows in the back, they have a flange. Uh, the pattern mm -hmm. has a flange, uh, but it's it's a little bit of a wider flange. And these days, I'm really going for like that one inch. I really like that that tiny tight flange. Yeah, that's nice. So fun. More pillows, pillows, and more pillows. I just right? love pulling in, you know, trims and and I mean, like the the one on the bottom right is just. All that fringe is so fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's that curly fringe too. So it's mm -hmm. really and so and I love I love this. You know, just this creative idea of kind of putting a square inside a square um, to allow you to introduce some different patterns in the same pillow. That's pretty. So I've got to tell you about something I designed, which I loved, and then uh -huh. they didn't. They ended up going in another direction, but pulling in. For a boy's room, little grommets, you know, mm. like on like pillow edges and things like that. It was, and, and the bedding, I had a flange edge with grommets. It was. Oh, nice. Oh, I, I loved that. So yeah. Someday, someday somebody's going to have grommets on their bedding because it looked. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. I bet. And this is an example. I don't know how it's not sitting on the bed that it went to, but um, this is a really, really long lumbar pillow that I did for someone's uh, master bedroom. And we just did some pretty trim. And this was one where she had a lot of grays and whites, which we all have, right? And her bedding was all grays and whites and she wanted a pop of color. So we did that really, really long. I mean, it almost went end to end on her bed. It was really pretty. I love how you pulled in that the banding on it as well. I mean, that's, yeah. that's a great way to pull in a pop of color. <laughs> this one, uh, again, just fun. You, you can tell. I, yeah. just, I just like mixing colors and, and patterns and things like that. And um, so. I love that little bolster. Are those little buttons uh, or little pom-poms? They're, they're like a half of a pom-pom. That's so, so it's cute. The trim with, with like half of a pom-pom going down. You know, and I think something else this shows is the importance of like pattern placement in the design of your pillows, right? So um, ha being able to get that full pattern down that center is really pretty and impactful on that bolster. Oh, yes. If the pattern was off, it, it, it would not have had the impact that it had. Yeah. Um, this is uh, just, you know, we did the typical three pillows on the back with her shams and then just a couple fun. And this is actually a mix of that one would be a store bought because it's for a teenage room with a couple uh, custom ones that we, that we made. And I think, you know, you can mix and match a little bit like that, especially when you're talking about a teenager where in three months she could be on to something different. So we knew like the, the foundation for the bedding was really good. And then we could mix in a couple other fun things. And what teenager doesn't want a fur pillow? 
right? <laughs> and this, this so was, as, as you can tell, very traditional, uh, mm -hmm. very clean lines. This is an example of where we used more of uh, more poly as opposed to down in the pillows to keep them ah. nice and, and tight as opposed to uh, having them slouchy. You know, we always wanted yeah. them to look the same. Yeah, I like that. And I think that's important um, in that room and with that pattern and you wanted that fringe to stand up. Yep. So what went inside actually mattered a lot. Mm -hmm. It's really beautiful. I love that. Oh, this was fun. This was a husband and wife, and she liked things really neutral, really uh -huh. neutral. And but she was willing to go with this pattern. He wanted to. He he would have. He really wanted a lot of pattern. Uh, so we had to compromise. Uh, but we were able to do that by keeping it still a little, you know, neutral for her, but pulling in like you know, pulling in the chocolate uh, cut velvet pillow in the front and the stripes and so we were able to mix the two of their styles That's together nice. and you know sometimes it's sometimes it's hard when you know you've got two people with totally different ideas of what they want yeah to uh, come yeah, especially when you're doing a master bedroom because that's that is our personal space but you get two different personalities and it's both of their personal spaces and that's and I think that's where good design can also really help to bridge that gap right you know yes, you can definitely. you could pull in different com, different components that were important to each of them and I love all the texture in that fun lumbar you've got in the front there uh, do you love the 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 lamp on the floor on the side <laughs> Actually, I suppose the, the, I could have cropped that out <laughs> The, the nightstand had not come in yet, but <laughs> <laughs> that happens sometimes. <laughs> it was on order. <laughs> I had one client. She was like, I swear every time you do a project for me and you go to take a picture, I'm like, ah, not all the pieces are here yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love this bedroom. It's so pretty. I know you love this one. Mm -hmm. uh, and this was, this was a duvet as opposed to a um, uh, comforter. But again, pulling in and they didn't want too many pillows. Six was enough. Mm -hmm. And it's it perfect nice. though. You know, it's still, and the height of these is so nice and the stripes that really like makes your eyes go up, but they're just, it's perfectly sized. So it still feels full without having 20 pillows, you know? Right, right. And it was a high headboard. So it yeah. was. Yeah, really pretty. Ooh, this is another pretty one. Yes, this one was fun um, because I basically was able to do anything I wanted. And uh, so in the upper left, that is a round window and she needed all of the windows black out. And that's a, and, and then she had a um, candle in that window. So that's actually a candle right in front of that pillow. <laughs> right candle. there. Kind of holds the pillow in, um, but it's, it's perfect. She, you know, it, it, keeps enough light out. But that, as you can see, works with the pictures in the middle with the white mm -hmm. and, you know, just pulling in the buttons, pulling in the all this, buttons. all this pleating and all this detail on these pillows is just amazing. Yeah. And that's, you know, when I'm designing pillows, I'm always looking at, okay, what can I add to make it different? Uh, even the mm -hmm. one on the lower left, where we're just pulling down just a little bit of trim and then we yeah. just have a, you know, a small flange going around it. Yeah. You know, just something That's so totally pretty special. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those are really fun. And we already saw that one. Oh, okay. Yeah. That was the first <laughs> one we talked about. Yeah. <laughs> Again, more pillows, more pillows. We can keep going. More pretty pillows. I know we could talk about pillows forever. I love these with the, okay. Love this one. We'll stop here because this is, uh, this is again, monogramming, uh, mm -hmm. pulling in that same pattern that I had shown you on the blue, the blue and green pillows. Early. Yeah, that's really pretty. Uh, the same thing. And then we've got a larger flange on the back and then we've got the trim that goes around uh, for the back pillows where we've got navy, white and the pattern. Yeah, so pretty. It all pulled it together nicely. Yeah, I love how you layered all that together like that. So Very pretty. classic. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, benches and window seats. Okay. Yay. And and Rebecca, let's see. We are okay. We got to keep running. Yeah, we do. I know. This again was uh, I. I spoke about this one in the beginning. Okay. Let's go to the All next right. One. All right. <laughs> Um, I think, I don't know about you, Debbie, but I always think that window seats can be a little bit hard for people because depending on the size of them, you know, deciding whether, because if like a window seat this big, if you really wanted to stack that full of pillows, which you could, you'd have to put a lot of pillows in there. Yes. Um, so trying to decide the right proportions and, and all of that can be really challenging in a window seat. And it also comes down to whether or not you want to use the window seat. Yeah. So is it just going to be for, for decoration or are you going to use it? This is in a bathroom. Look at that massive window seat. That's in a huge. Yeah. Uh, and, but she was very clear. She's like, we're going to be using this. And that's so, great. Okay, we'll, we'll pull in a little bit of softness just to soften the edges, but we're going to keep it open so that you can utilize it. Yeah. And it, it was just perfect. Like you, you filled in those two little sides just perfectly so that the proportions were, mm -hmm. were right. It looks really nice. I love that. And those are fun pillows. Is that an envelope pillow? That's an envelope, yes. And yeah. the one behind it, that had trim, I believe. Uh, yes, it okay. had trim to pull in the uh, treatment above. It's really pretty. This one, again, talk about a massive window seat. Mm -hmm. And this one I worked on with a designer. And uh, she just pulled just the patterns that she pulled together were just gorgeous. I mean, I, I love the zebra, you know, the zebra type uh, window seat. Cushion. And, but then mm -hmm. she pulled in some creams that pull those gray tones in as well. And yeah. uh, not too many. It was a massive window, so it could still be utilized very easily. Uh, but enough to bring in softness and make it comfortable. Yeah. I love too how you, you, you know, kind of, have three in the middle and then two on the side because that really kind of goes you know it just it feels right for that window how you have that laid out there very nice um this was a window seat in an office and you can see there's it's a beautiful office with these gorgeous navy blue built-ins and there's there's a lot going on here in this big window with the shutters so we did the the cushion and then we kept normally those pillows are turned the other way I, you know, sometimes when I'm snapping pictures, Debbie, <laughs> I'm like, oh, good. <laughs> I am. Um, I know. I because, don't realize until yeah. I get home that I'm like, oh. <laughs> yep. But, yep. Um, but we had this pretty, she fell in love with this Romo fabric. And so we had just a pretty hint of that Romo and then these fun bolsters on either side. And believe it or not, this is a pretty big room. Those are big. That's a big bolster um, I, on I either believe side. It, yep. Now, another nice thing about pillows is you're talking about Romo fabric. So uh -huh. this is a way to pull in a beautiful, extremely expensive fabric. Yes. That you fall in love with. You can't afford to put it on your windows, but you do one or two pillows and it, and it brings in that look that you're going for. Yeah. I, I love this room. What is in the back? Is that uh, in the back of your shelves? Yeah. Those, is is that that's that's just reflection from lights she's got lights in there okay so, all right yeah yeah what a beautiful room it is a, it is a gorgeous room and there's this beautiful cork wallpaper and it's it was just beautiful so it was fun cut and she's got a large thing of artwork on the back side behind it uh, on the opposite wall of this that has all these pretty colors in it so it just okay. tied it all together which was really fun Let's see. Um, oh, Mary's got to go because her husband needs uh, to Skype a call. Mary, thank you for joining. Bye, Mary. Us. Thanks. <laughs> we're, we're here every week at two o'clock. Yes. Join us again. Uh, simple, just simple pillows pulling in again, you know, a little yeah. bit of trim on one, a little bit of uh, welting on the other. Just and you know, there's a, there's a lot of architectural details here. So that just like softens it up over in that corner. I love yep. that. This is a pretty, pretty, pretty I bench. I love her husband made this, this alcove. They had this extra space in the upstairs hallway uh -huh. and, and he built this. Wow. He's an incredible car carpenter. Beautiful. And so we just pulled in some nice pillows just to pull it together. And 
uh, you know, she's got she's got some um, I'd say some some boys that are high teens, and I know that my boys love the window seat cushion that we have. They yeah. lay in it, and read, and stuff like that. And I picture that with this area, such yeah. a beautiful area. It is gorgeous. Trent, Trent said he loves napping on the uh, window seat. Yeah, I bet he does. <laughs> You know, it's funny, Debbie, um, I did a whole cushion in that pattern. So it's a pretty fabric. It is. Um, so you can never have too many pillows. So these were some fun pillows that Debbie and I have done over the years that we wanted to share with you. Um, to, just to give you some different ideas and inspiration. And you can just click through. I mean, this okay. one just has grommets. Trying yeah, to but you got to talk about those details. I mean... Thinking through, look, look, she, there is a button, there is gathering. I, I'm going to brag on you, Debbie, because you're very good at all the pretty details. Thank there's, you. there's, you know, the fringe, there's more pretty, pretty well thing. Then there's this fabric and those grommets and this beautiful, but it doesn't, when you look at it, it just works. Like you don't look at it and go, oh my gosh, there's so many things going on. Um, because you did it, so you orchestrated it so beautifully. It's Thank so you. Now, fun. now these two pillows actually sit on a banquette, so you see the side of them. I just Pretty. took it straight on, so that you yeah. can see it. But they sit on the side of a banquette, which is absolutely beautiful. It is gorgeous. These are some fun W's. Love them. Yep, just just showing again that you can bring in monogramming, um, and you can do appliqueing. Um, I love doing the three pieces like that, you know, where you, you bring a pretty, either a pattern or a solid down the center of that pillow like that. That can be a really fun way to make it fun and interesting. And, and the yellow with the blue, you know, yeah. the green with the blue. It's such classic combinations. Yeah. Yeah. It's really gorgeous. Oh, there's your grommets. There's my grommets. Uh, so, you know, I've gotten them a little bit. Uh, <laughs> you know, pulling in two different fabrics and then actually seeing the base pillow behind those grommets. Yeah, and so, pulling those different patterns together is really pretty. Hi, Joy. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Joy. <laughs> this one is a, a fun pillow that I always like to share when I talk about pillows with people for a couple reasons. One, we have that jute cording on the side, which really is, you know, it's a little different, right? So it's fun. You don't always have to just do fabric or something solid. Um, and this actually, this fabric had a big medallion in the middle um, that sometimes I would normally, I, sometimes I might put that medallion square in the middle of this, of the pillow. But on this particular pillow and in where we were putting this, it was more of a casual space. So having that really formal medallion in the middle was going to feel too fussy. So we, you know, off-centered it and used some of the space in between the medallions as the, as the focus, um, which I, I thought turned out really fun and made it a little more casual. Well, it's great doing that. The other thing that, that we do, and I know you do also, mm -hmm. is when you've got a pattern that has like six different colors in it, mm -hmm. and, but you're focusing maybe more on blue or yeah. you know, in that room, you want that splash of color, but you want a real focused uh, part of a color also. And so, so sometimes we'll, we'll work a pillow around so that we can pull more of that pop of color out. Yeah, I have this um, 20 by 20 piece of plexiglass that I had made so that I can sit it on top of the fabric. And Move it around. So it's and, like yeah, that. kind of see what different, different options are going to look like when you lay it on different parts of the fabric and what it does. Um, this is fun. I mean, coral and navy is such a fun color, color combination. And we've got the dots and we've got the pretty like kind of Greek key and then the textures and we did some contrasting piping. And there was a lot of colors and textures here, but they just all work together. It went in a very, these, these went on two sofas in a really large family room and these on the chairs. Um, and it almost felt like we didn't have quite enough pillows, to be honest with really? you. Really? <laughs> and I love the wide herringbone on the yeah, navy. Yeah, that's really pretty. And and the navy welt on uh, the strie in the back. Mm -hmm. it, it looks, it's just beautiful. Makes it really stand out. And this client of mine loves her karate chops, so. 
There you go. We had a good karate chop. Um, this was a fun one. We actually reused this fringe, and I won't tell you how many curse words I said when I was holding the fringe trying to sew it, because <laughs> when fringe comes, it comes made so it's easy to sew but when you're reusing you don't have that same <laughs> yeah, the, the stitching's already been pulled out so it fringes <laughs> yeah. Ooh, you're but we, we found these fun uh and then this is one where we did put the medallion in the middle because it is a more formal room it works with this color combination and that fringe um and those all went on a really pretty sofa very nice and this is just oh, a fun yeah. pop book Fun pop of color, right? And we used, you know, an easy, easy way if you're not trying to go all nuts being totally crazy creative is just to use the pattern in the piping for one of the pillows. That's an easy thing you can do that makes it feel really custom and, and helps to tie, tie things together. I love those, which make me think real quick. Um, yes. You, you can have recycled pillow fill also. Oh, and, right. And that, um, that can, you can keep it outside. Uh, yes. But there's, there's a great recycled pillow fill. Um, it's recycled with, uh, I'm trying to remember because I've used it in the past. I want to say like, like plastic bag. Plastic yes, yes, I think they do. Yep. yep. Um, tassels are really in right now. So we added some tassels to these, these pretty pillows. Um, and again, we layered some different patterns and, you know, these are kind of same size patterns, but they're so different yet the colors work together that it worked. And then we had that fun Papa yellow and, and teal. Um, and there were actually like six more pillows cause it went on a very large, um, sectional. And when you have a really, really big sectional, like these are, I think, 20 they're big like almost euro pillow size because they would get lost on that sectional if we didn't do something really big right i love this sweet little pillow <laughs> when i was working with my client her first grandson uh -huh. and so this pillow went with the room that we were uh decorating and knew that he would be in that room Oh, that's so sweet. I love that. It's so pretty. Um, another fun one where we, uh, we actually, she fell in love with this fabric and then we decided the shape of the pillow <laughs> based on the fabric and how we wanted to, to set that. And then we did some pretty navy, navy ones to go with it. Um, but those were, those were fun pillows. And again, I, you know, when I'm doing a pattern, I, I, will probably more often than not encourage you to do some sort of solid piping around the edge or welting because it it just helps to set off the the pattern yes all right questions anybody have any questions for us nothing That's so okay. much fun talking about pillows with you guys. I know. And, and you guys know that we could, let's see, Trent said, uh, oh, do we know what next week's topic is? Um, well, <laughs> actually, uh, yes. Rebecca, we haven't talked mm -hmm. about this. Yeah, but you've got one. Um, you know, I, I'm always game. I was thinking arch windows. <gasps> arch windows. That's a good one. We haven't arch done arch windows. windows. So Arch okay. windows it is. Excellent. Mm -hmm. so, Week we're going to do arch windows and hold on let's see i think uh, uh kelly kelly i don't understand give us time i'm not sure what you're talking about um so if you want to if you want to write back let me know otherwise you know i'm going to i'm going to be calling you so <laughs> 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 all um, right so we'll talk about arch windows next week next week thursday two o'clock Yes. And we will be sending out our Zoom invitations. Remember, also, we are always on YouTube. If you go just yes. coffee and curtains on YouTube. So if you miss anything, you can always catch us there. And yes. please pass us along to friends, family, neighbors, uh, because the more the merrier. <laughs>